Do you have a favorite song in this new album? Um, well, of course, the ones I wrote, <laughs> because otherwise I wouldn't have written them. Um, but so that's the opening track, Monopoly on Truth and Deter the Tyrant. And those are the songs that I wrote, but also like, like you said already, Delirium, the ballad. It's a very intimate song and it goes open in this yeah, kind of dramatic mid part and then with a solo and yeah, it's a very, very nice song. Um, a little different from the ballads we've done in the past, but um, and apart from that, yeah, I think uh, Requiem for the Indifferent, the song itself, um, that's a very good one as well. And yeah, I, I basic or Epica basically makes albums more than songs, so you kind of have to see the whole album in a yeah, there's some bands, and you can just you listen to one song, and basically you know what what all the song is gonna be like, and and that's a little different with us, where you could have like Delirium, which is a ballad, and then next to it you have Inf uh, Internal Warfare, which is like a really brutal song, and then yeah, go into Requiem for the Indifferent, which starts a little with Arab melodies, and then goes into uh, uh, a real metal song and, and so there's lots of stuff happening and that's why it's difficult to say this is really the best or that's my favorite because yeah it's more the album which is my favorite now and, and you have to listen to it as a whole that's why sometimes it's not uh, easy for for people if they've never heard what we're doing then it's really um, yeah not easy to to yeah, you have to take the the how should I say? Um, you have to do some effort to know what we're doing because if you just listen to one song, then you don't really know the whole thing. So yeah, you better listen to one whole album and then you kind of get what we're doing or trying to do. <laughs> yes, you're right. I I listened to the whole uh, album this morning and uh, one in once. Yeah. And uh, I found it uh, very theatrical, so uh, it came on my mind something like a dark musical or something like that because there are really, um, mm, at really uh, a kind of atmosphere, and uh, the the voice of the of your singer is wonderful. Uh, do you do you uh, think about a kind of a theatrical epic uh, um, kind of a musical when uh, yeah. about your album? Well, the, one of the biggest influences for for Epica as a band is um, is scores, film scores. So w that's why we also sometimes have really long songs which start like. Uh, not so, or a little dramatic, then going into metal, then a mid part, and there's, like I said, lots of stuff going on. So we don't limit ourselves to a certain thing, and um, and also like in the studio, you keep your ears open, so you you just let the song decide where to go, you know, um, and we're not really restricted to uh, intro, verse, chorus, first chorus, uh, mid part and then the chorus again and the outro. So we some songs have that because it works but uh, other songs have a very different kind of structure and um, so yeah we, we do think about that um, and we have a lot of options of course because we have Simone who's uh, uh, singing and then we have Mark who's grunting uh, then we have the choir, so all only vocals is already so much stuff you can do, and then you have the guitars, you have the whole orchestra, you have a whole yeah all the keyboard parts, piano, whatever you want, it's all in there, so we can use it. And if you look at your average punk band or whatever, I mean I don't have anything against that, but they are just a lot more limited, so they have to keep it simple, and then. Yeah, they blame them. It's simple music. Yeah, of course they don't have all the options. So, and um, and that's why we always try to also go further with that. And and if you have the whole orchestra, then just use it and and don't limit yourself to only, yeah, backing up the heavy guitars. Just yeah. You also with Simone, she's using lots of different um, kind of voices, like the classical way and also just the pop way or. Um, yeah, and I think 
combining all these elements is what what makes it so interesting also for us as songwriters you there's nothing you could say like oh i can't do this or that so but uh, I was thinking about this uh, song, Serenade of Self-Destruction, and I know that um, Nuclear Blast uh, puts out some ver some record, uh, some album with uh, only instrumental versions. Yeah. So I think, but really few. So I think that uh, there are uh, few fans really, really uh, lucky because they have a limited edition of this album. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, it was an idea of uh, the of your of the nuclear blast, or uh do you mean the mistake, which was m <laughs> so, it, so it was a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake. Yeah, it was because we do have, uh, and that's why the mistake was made. Uh, we do have with our limited edition uh, copies. We have an instrumental version of the whole album so that's that's uh and then by accident this version of that song ended up on our uh on the official version and uh, of course when we found out we weren't very happy i'm still a little uh, <laughs> because it's not the whole product um but they they provided as a, as a free download and fans could have it and of course yeah now it's seen as a sort of collector's item um so yeah it, it yeah there was a solution in the end but uh it's just something like because we did check the final masters but then afterwards something must have been mixed up and uh so yeah we'll we'll double check it next time for sure <laughs> and again and again <laughs> Just to make sure that it doesn't happen, because it's a pity that you know you you put so much work and time and energy in it, and then something like that is just a little yeah. It was kind kind of an unfortunate uh, event, but yeah. So it wasn't a nuclear blast idea to do it like that. It was a <laughs> it was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> well, it shouldn't have happened, but it happened. <laughs> I would like to know <laughs> if there is, um, if you have some weird episode about some fans or uh, something that happens oh, when you have in you. Have okay, <laughs> no, no, the most one, I want the best. <laughs> something about a fan. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing which was very funny was that a guy he wanted to get a, a signature tattooed on his back, but. You know, you would think that you first draw it and then you do it with the needle or that a tattoo artist would do it. But no, he wanted us to do it without doing it up front. So you start, I've never held such a needle and I was there with, with the ink and then... But you, I don't know if you ever tried to to do your, your signature really slow. It's impossible. Yeah. I was like starting and then you have to take ink again and <laughs> go further and and he starts bleeding and <laughs> I'm like okay <laughs> so that was kind of weird but um yeah other than that there's there's lots of fans who if if they see you they yeah they uh start shaking or very nervous or yeah and they sometimes forget that we're also just you know normal people and this happens to be my job but um yeah it's sometimes kind of weird to see how they react but uh yeah, I guess it's just the nerves or something, so, yeah. But other than that, we have quite decent fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just the last question, because I would like to know, uh, uh, when uh, do, you, do you realize that you want to be a musician? Because, you know, that yeah. would be a magic moment, I think, no? Well, first I... I I used to play classical guitar and I hated it in the beginning really. I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to drum and my dad said no drums in this house so okay what do you want to do and then I said trumpets just to piss him off <laughs> but uh, and then the class of trumpet was already full with students so I couldn't do that then I said okay I'll do guitar and I never practiced and then um, after a while my teacher said like come on you know you're you don't practice at all but you're actually better than the average student so if you would practice you would get really well and then from that moment on I think I was uh, I don't know like 14 or 15 then I started practicing classical a lot 
And then when I was 16, I started playing electric guitar and that's where it started. I was like, yeah, this is cool. Like the amp, loud. And then my dad was, oh no, <laughs> not that noise again. But, uh, and also my brothers, they went crazy. Um, but yeah, from that moment on, I practiced, practiced. And, and that's where I knew like, I want to do something with music. And I didn't realize that it would be possible to, I thought I, w I would end up as a music teacher or something. Um, of course, you kind of hope that one day maybe I can play in a band and travel the world and and here I am now. So, but yeah, it's it, it was all worth it still. And it's, yeah, it's really <laughs> awesome. And uh, I have quite some friends who are music teachers. So, and um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Like they say, yeah, I've been teaching this and that and I've I'm like, yeah, yeah I w today I had an interview with uh, coming soon and yeah, <laughs> no, but it's just, um, it's of course a dream which is, uh, which came true and, uh, but it's not like it happens just like that. We, yeah, we put a lot of work and energy in it and yeah, it doesn't come just like that. So, <laughs> so thank you and uh, we hope to enjoy your show. <laughs> Do not? Yeah. Cool. Another beer or maybe two? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you can enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> always. <laughs> beer, it's <laughs> <enjoyable>. <laughs> Do you want to say something to our audience? Sure. Um, it's just an Italian audience or? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I also hope you'll be here tonight and if not tomorrow in Milan. And. Um, it's always fun to be in Italy. Uh, we also had the VIP session and people are really friendly and always give chocolate and whatever you have and good catering always. So, but anyway, I hope you all enjoy um, uh, our new album and that we might see you at a show or a festival or in the future. Thank you. <laughs>